The scene begins with Sean acting strangely to an unnamed woman. He claims not to know her. This, coupled with an unidentified delay on their train and various phone calls received by the woman, creates an atmosphere of intrigue and tension. Confused Calter Stevens introduces himself to Christina who, knowing him as Sean, tries to calm him down. As the train arrives in Chicago, Calter is contacted by someone named Goodwin via speaker, adding another layer of mystery. Captain Stevens wakes up in an unknown location, communicating with a mysterious entity named Beleaguered Castle. Still recovering from disorientation and aware that there's been an explosion, he is trying to cope with his situation while seeking answers to his questions. Goodwin is helping Captain Stevens recalibrate his memory via a series of cognitive exercises. Through sequences of recall tasks, Captain Stevens successfully remembers the order of playing cards, the name of a character, and finally, Goodwin's name. This complex process is intended to help him regain his orientation and recover from the explosion's impact on his consciousness. In Scene 5, Captain Stevens is urged by Goodwin to recall who bombed the train, but he's struggling with a disoriented reality and wants information about his crew's current situation. Meanwhile, a conversation between commuters reveals an individual considering a significant life change. Captain Stevens, back on the train, starts to feel like he's in a different but the same reality. Simultaneously, Christina is talking about a significant life decision, possibly moving away from Brian. A strange, hostile conversation with the rude passenger raises suspicion. Calter is still working to figure out the bomb scenario on the train. Calter, still on the train, identifies a suspicious man who's seemingly a reality show participant with a sketchy past. When he finds a bag that holds a bomb, he communicates with Goodwin for defusing instructions but gets no response. Afraid, he chooses to leave it untouched. With the bomb discovery causing panic, Calter tries to manage the situation. However, a passenger named Sean defies his instructions, leading to a physical altercation. Witnessing this, Goodwin instructs him to stabilize the situation. Bewildered and frustrated, Calter demands answers regarding his peculiar situation and mission's authority. Despite his objections and confusion, Goodwin orders to send him back in without a proper briefing, asserting the urgency of the matter as lives are at stake. In this riveting revelation, Calter learns of a bomb explosion on the commuter train he found himself on. He is told that he's now assumed the identity of a passenger named Sean Fentress, who was on the train. Realizing the urgency of another impending attack, Calter provides bomb details to Goodwin, marking progress in their mission. Continuing his mission, Calter is instructed to search for the bomber among his fellow passengers on the train. He should focus on those who seem restless or secluded. Goodwin emphasizes the critical eight-minute window he has before the explosion occurs. Meanwhile, Christina notices Calter being unusually quiet and witnesses him help a passenger. A lighthearted interaction with Christina sees Calter trying to engage her in his game of identifying any suspicious characters on the train. She humorously diffuses the scenario, spinning a fictional tale about a group conspiracy among the seemingly normal passengers. Calter continues to play his game of profiling fellow passengers with Christina. Suddenly, he gets uneasy upon finding a broken phone. Calter immediately asks Christina to join him. It seems something strange is happening and they have to leave the train at Glenbrook Station. Calter's suspicions about the train lead him to convince Christina to get off early. In the station, he begs a fellow passenger to borrow a phone, who becomes uncomfortable with his approach and threatens to call the police. Suddenly, Calter experiences great discomfort, appearing to suffer from severe motion sickness. Upon exiting the train, an ill Calter desperately searches for a phone, causing chaos and frightening Christina. Suddenly, he faints on the tracks, barely escaping an oncoming train. He wakes up cold and disoriented, calling out for Goodwin but is met with silence and powering down equipment. In a state of crisis, Calter urgently calls for Goodwin as his oxygen supply cuts off, leaving him gasping for breath. The control room deploys different help methods, managing to power the system up again, allowing Goodwin to communicate in distorted sentences. Captain Stevens confronts a mysterious voice about a capsule. Realizing Rutledge is in charge, Stevens reports his unsuccessful mission. Rutledge informs him that his priority is to find the bomber and not rescue the passengers, since they can only survive inside the source code. Stevens demanding Rutledge to explain the complex reality behind source code. Dr. Rutledge explains the complex science behind the source code. He elucidates that the source code takes advantage of the brain's electromagnetic field and an eight-minute short-term memory track. Stevens can only exist in Sean Fentress' consciousness within those last eight minutes of life, adding a time constraint to Stevens' task. 
Stevens is adamant that he saved Christina from the train explosion. However, Dr. Rutledge and Colleen confirm Christina's death, underlining the fact that source code enables access to a parallel reality, not actual time travel. The tension escalates when Colleen reveals the possibility of a second attack imminent on downtown Chicago. Knowing about a catastrophic attack on downtown Chicago, the team hurries toward prevention. Dr. Rutledge and Colleen give Stevens the green light to use force if it stops the attack. Meanwhile, in the parallel reality, Christina surprises Stevens by revealing she has quit her job and enrolled in an LSAT course. Sean Fentress, now inhabited by Stevens' consciousness, charms Christina and disarms a hostile figure on the train, surprising Christina with his sudden change in character. Amid the commotion, she insists on helping the injured man. Though he seems suspicious due to his activities on the train, Sean slash Stevens manages to maintain Christina's trust. Sensing his desperation for a phone, Christina asks him how he'd spent his last moments. He answers he'd apologize to his father. As they communicate telepathically, Stevens quiz Goodwin about her experiences on the other side of a source code mission, but she refutes having any such experience. Stevens struggles to convince Goodwin to contact his father for his final apology. She dismisses his sentimentality and insists on focusing on mission objectives. Meanwhile, during his conversation with Christina, the mention of a missing friend in Afghanistan slightly reveals his actual identity. Stevens and Christina share a conversation before getting their coffee, and he talks about his vivid dreams involving her. As their intimate and easygoing interaction continues, Stevens oddly rummages through the bag of a fellow passenger causing some discomfort in the train compartment. Stevens gets into a row with the fellow passenger, raising suspicions among the onlookers. Trying to mend the situation, he strikes up a conversation with a military woman to borrow her phone, offering to pay for it. Stevens manages to call Dr. Rutledge for help while the train is about to depart. However, Christina discovers while looking him up online that Captain Calter Stevens, her companion, is reported to have been killed in action two months ago in Afghanistan, leaving Stevens bewildered. Stevens starts his new mission as a man suffering from a heart attack. Suddenly, Goodwin enters his reality, declaring that he's part of Operation Beleaguered Castle, assuring him he's safe, focusing on preventing a subsequent attack and seemingly neglecting Calter's mental, emotional, and physical well-being. She dismisses even his death in a helicopter crash as irrelevant until the train bomber is apprehended. Stevens, struggling to comprehend his surreal existence post the helicopter crash, confronts Goodwin with some unsettling questions. Goodwin, while acknowledging his brain activity, dismisses the rest of his conscious existence as a mere manifestation. Prioritizing the mission to prevent a second attack, she discourages him from investigating his own tragic incident. Goodwin explains the complexities of source code to Stevens. She likens him to a clock's hand constantly reset to serve a specified function. Despite Stevens' objection about the process's legality, Goodwin insists that it's approved by a military court and for some soldiers, this is a preferable destiny to death. Captain Stevens grows increasingly frustrated with his repeating ordeal and argues with Goodwin about its inhumanity. She coldly reminds him of the number of lives at stake, including his own. Despite his frustrations, Stevens is abruptly sent back to the train. On the train, Christina's sudden appearance surprises Stevens once more. Goodwin pressures a distraught Stevens to dig deeper into his repeating encounters to identify the bomber. Meanwhile, Stevens grapples with Goodwin's revelations and reflects on a conversation with his father about his military service and his sense of responsibility towards his unit. Determined to identify the bomber, Stevens forcefully confronts Troxel on the train, convinced he is the culprit. As Troxel dials a number on his phone under duress, Stevens erroneously concludes he's the bomber. The phone doesn't trigger a bomb, but another unexpected situation. Stevens confronts Derek Frost, who he believes is the bomber, on the train. However, he finds that the situation isn't as simple as expected when Frost reveals a device. Shots are fired, and Stevens is left confused about the identity of a man named Sean Fentress. Stevens discovers Derek Frost is the bomber who believes in starting over from a ruined world. Despite a blast that sends Stevens back to Beleaguered Castle, he manages to provide Frost's details and existence of a radioactive bomb in a white van to Goodwin. Stevens conveys to Goodwin his desire to save people on the train despite knowing the limitations of the simulation. Meanwhile, the police are closing in on Frost's van, with reporters documenting the looming showdown live on television. The scene unfolds as the police capture Frost and Stevens' mission is declared a success. The conversation between Stevens and Goodwin gets personal, 
revealing a bit about their lives in Goodwin raising a philosophical question about alternate realities. Give him another chance to find the second detonator he pleases. His plea leaves Goodwin contemplative and in a difficult position. In this scene, Goodwin informs Captain Stevens that she will end his life support at the end of the source code. Despite knowing the impermanence of this iteration, he decides to save Christina. A day of confessions continues as Christina admits she has been waiting for weeks for Derek to ask her out for a cup of coffee. With newfound determination, Derek decides to skip work and asks her to wait a bit while he saves the world. As the train approaches Glenbrook Station, Dr. Rutledge gives orders to Captain Goodwin to prepare for the next deployment of Captain Stevens. Despite Goodwin's ethical concerns about erasing Stevens' memory, Rutledge maintains that Stevens' unique abilities are invaluable for preventing future disasters. Derek Frost confesses to his crimes, getting arrested, and the threat is diffused. The crew considers erasing Captain Stevens' memory again. Stevens, now living as Sean Fentress, finally gathers the courage to speak to his father, Donald, identifying himself as a friend of Coulter, his original identity. Sean, who is actually Captain Stevens in Sean Fentress' body, reaches out to his own father, Donald, pretending to be a friend of his son. He conveys Coulter's regret for their last conversation and assures him of Coulter's love. Later, amidst their normal routine, a call alerts Dr. Rutledge to an unexpected setback. In an attempt to lighten the mood, Captain Stevens dares Max to make everyone on the train laugh. While Max manages to engage the train passengers with humor, Captain Stevens ponders on the new revelation and flirty exchange with Christina. The laughter subsides and Max's demeanor changes. He turns to Christina, asking her what she'd do with her last minute of life. Taken aback, she suggests making every second count and implies she'd kiss him again. The situation escalates as Captain Stevens demands Goodwin to stop the operation. However, he flatlines. Later, Max and Christina laugh again, discussing the bet while the radio informs of a lovely day. Max and Christina enjoy a peaceful day together. Later, Calter receives a phone call saying that a terrorist attack on a commuter train near Chicago has been thwarted and the suspect was found on board. In this scene, Calter has sent an email to Captain Goodwin, trying to make her realize they have actually created an alternate reality with the source code. He pleads for her assistance and asks for his past self to be reassured that everything is okay.